Expedia? Skyscanner? Hopper? Forget all that noise. When it comes to finding the absolute best deal on airfare, Google Flights is the only search tool you need. Today I'm going to show you exactly why Google Flights is the most powerful search engine available. I'll walk you through some tips and tricks and show you some lesser known features that will describe just how powerful this tool is. So let's dig into it. All right, so let's jump right into it. We're gonna start with the most common flight search on Google Flights, and that is point A to point B. You know a date, you know a destination, you know where you're flying from. So let's let's get started here. I pulled up Google Flights, googleflights.com, gets me to this main page right here. I'm gonna do an example. So say we live in Minneapolis, and let's look for a flight to Chicago. So just to start, if I type in Chicago, it's actually gonna populate a couple of airports. It's gonna populate. Um, O'Hare and Midway um, for this one. So I can just select Chicago and then I know it's going to bring in both those airports. This similar concept works for other cities with, with multiple airports. Think of uh, Washington, D.C., Dallas, New York City. Um, but we're going to stick for Chicago for this example here. Next thing I want to do is go to this dates field over here for departure and return. And I'll click on this and I know I want to go, let's see, a Saturday to a Saturday in June. So let's click on that and this is how we get started here. You click on search and we're already starting to see some options look pretty cheap so far, but we can uh, probably do better than this. Before I get into any of these filters or anything else, I really wanna start to talk about kind of the best thing you should get used to right away when you do these Google Flight searches and that is using the calendar. The calendar is the most important tool I think you can use to find cheap flights. See, we have selected a Saturday to a Saturday here. Let's just when I click on this first date field, I can see there's already cheaper options earlier in the week. I can actually use this calendar to scan through 11 months of flights. So I can go all the way right now through the start of April 2026, which is great. I can see all these different um, prices. And keep in mind, these prices are all from Minneapolis to Chicago for seven day trips. I can squeeze this down if I want, if I can only go three or two days. I can move that at the bottom. I can also select different flights up here too. But for the purpose of this one, I just wanted to highlight bringing up this calendar right away. Really good habit to get into. I see here if I go midweek, Wednesday to Wednesday, I'm saving about half as much money. Um, so I'm gonna select the 11th to the 18th and I'm gonna click done. Right when I change the dates, it's gonna pull up these different fares here. So pretty good prices here. $77. Um, before I make my selection of flights here, I do want to go over some of these important filters that you should always be looking at if uh, if you do want to book the best flight here. So under under the uh, destination and departure city, you have this first tab here that says stop. Uh, for this case, I would for sure filter for non-stop. This would be a great one here. Airlines, you know, if you're pick picky about airlines, maybe you don't want Sun Country or Spirit, chop that off. Not all airlines will, will be on these two routes, but I'll chop that down a little bit. Carry-on bags, I know a lot of people um, definitely want to use a carry-on bag filter for most flights. You can also filter for check bags. Um, if you do have a price threshold, you can drop that down. And the last one I wanted to point out is this is a pretty cool um, feature here for for using times so you can filter in your outbound and your return times say you know maybe you have to work all day you can push this out to the evening for your outbound same concept goes for the return flight maybe you want to stay in chicago a little bit later in the day you can bump that time up there you can also do that on arrival times too if you know you need to be home at a certain time or or arrive in your city at a certain time so a couple cool features just to just to show you there at the top for google flights filters so I do want to show you one more thing here. Say we're happy with this flight. I'm going to pick this non-stop um, routing here. It's going to get us to this checkout page. So you can see everything included here. Currently uh, two free carry-on, two free check bags uh, for Southwest. That won't last forever. But we are looking at this. If I click on continue, it's going to take me right to Southwest Airlines website and I can book that right with Southwest. I do want to show you some analytics down here. This is a really interesting how Google does this and, and they do this for the majority of, of prices that you see on here. So this $77 kind of this analysis here, this is very low for this flight. It does have a 60 day chart here up and down of, of all the cheapest fares that they've that Google flights has accumulated on this particular route. Pretty good option there. 
I'm going to go back a couple pages. I do want to point out a couple more things before we move on to some more concepts here. Say you don't like using this calendar grid. There's a few more different areas you can look at here. You can look at this date grid. You can pull the combinations apart um, one by one on this, on this date grid. Um, top dates and the dates on the right will be your combination here. Or you can also toggle over to price graph. So this has all of the cheapest prices um, over the next, uh, looks like two, three months here through August. Cool different way to look at these, uh, these prices by Google. It's a super interactive tool. Encourage you to look at these, uh, some great options here. So I'm gonna pull down these filters. While we're on this Google Flights page, I'm gonna show you a couple more kind of cool, fun things that you can look at here. So let's say we're a little bit flexible on our departure city. Maybe we don't quite live in Minneapolis. Maybe we're out of town a bit and we don't quite, we don't really mind where we travel out of. So let's, let's look here for Rochester is in Southern Minnesota. Maybe we go Duluth. If I separate these by commas, RST comma DLH comma MSP comma maybe Eau Claire, comma. I can break these up. I can actually add up to seven different airports on both sides here. I can do this for my departure city and for my destination. So say we're flexible, you know, maybe we, we wanna go to the East Coast, check out the East Coast, do something. You know, I could do DC, I could do New York, I could do Boston, you know, maybe Philadelphia, same thing here. I could go up to seven cities here and now i do have a lot of combinations that google is going to sort through here same thing oh i can pop up the calendar and see cheapest flight to all these cities for a seven day combination so i really encourage you um, to use this feature if you're pretty flexible on where you fly out of or if you want to use positioning flights to find the cheapest deal here pretty cool stuff where you can drop in a bunch of different airport combinations and dates and find the cheapest flight available Next portion I want to get to is Google Flights Explore, and I really like this feature here. So we're back to Google Flights. Uh, you can click on the Explore tab here, but I usually start right here on, on the main page. Um, let's say we're flying out of Los Angeles, LAX. So we're going to start right here with LAX. I can see I, I do have nothing in this where to box right here, and I do have some dates selected. I'm going to go ahead and click reset just to start this. There's pretty cool things. Using Google Flights Explorer is one of the best ways to find cheap flights. It is something that the Thrifty Traveler team does quite a bit of. We're on Google Flights all the time. I think you're going to be pretty impressed with, with what happens here. I'm going to show you Google Flights. So Los Angeles, leave that blank. Leave the dates blank. All I'm going to do is click on Explore right here. So this is going to take me to an, an overlay of a, a map of the U.S., a little bit of Mexico here too. So. You can see what's going on right off the bat. You see a lot of different white bubbles with, with cheap flights here. I'm gonna describe what's going on. This is actually the cheapest available price from Los Angeles to all these cities over the next six months in a one in a one week duration here. So if I click on that dates field, I can pull up some different parameters here that I do want to play with. So right now I have it on all and I have it on one week. I can actually change this if I know I can have pretty flexible travel in August, select that, June, July, whatever it may be. I'm going to keep this on all. If I can't go for a whole week, I can select a weekend. It'll break it up, up into shorter trips over the weekend here. Flexible dates. So right now we're at a you know, very high possibility of finding the cheapest flight possible over the next six months. You cannot do 11 months out like you can do on Google Flights. Google Flights Explorer is only a six month out feature. Specific dates. This is actually really helpful for people who know they only have a certain amount of time they can they can be away from work and they only have a certain amount of time they can travel on. For example, if it's a midweek this summer, July 9th to 16th, if I click on done, it's going to bring me up similar uh, similar results here, but these are all fixed on the on these days of, of flights. So this is a, a really cool feature here too. If you know when you can travel, but not where you can travel to, really, really recommend using Google Flights Explorer and plugging in your dates. I'm gonna go back a couple steps, keep flexible uh, dates in here, and I just wanna show you something. So right now we're fixed on the US here. You can start pretty small and go pretty big. So, you know, let's say we wanna go to Florida. I can type in a state and it'll bring me over and show me the state of Florida, all the different possibilities here. 
you know, say, I don't want to go to Florida, let's step it up a bit. Maybe I just want to go to Mexico. If I type in a country name, it'll take me to a country name. You know, it's uh, do the same thing for Europe too. If I type in England, it's going to drop me over over to uh, the UK and then show me some stuff for England here. Um, also, we can step it up a little bit too. If you want to do Europe, just type in Europe and it's going to show you the cheapest fares possible for a one week trip over the next six months from LA to Europe. Really cool stuff here. If I click on these possibilities and pull it up, it's gonna show me exactly what flight details I need to look at here. If I go back, not only can you do uh, uh, countries, you can also do regions. So maybe like, let's look at the Caribbean. Type that in, great idea down there. Great flights from Los Angeles. Cheapest flights possible to the Caribbean. Also, I can just leave this blank. If I delete this and click on anywhere, it's gonna really pull this back a little bit and I can scroll out and I can just jot through the map and, and you know, kind of do a globe trotting here and, and see exactly where the cheapest fares are all over these different countries and continents. Um, pretty cool stuff here for Google Flights Explorer. You can get picky on Google Flights Explorer too. If I click on this all filters tab, you can filter for different types of flights you want, nonstop only. You know, maybe maybe your price is, is sensitive, bring it down to under 800. Um, you know, you can sort by airline alliances here, flight duration, carry-on bags, etc. Really cool stuff here. Get really picky with the Google Flights Explorer map and you can find some great results. So not only can you search from LAX, you can also do what I pointed out earlier with these combination of airports. You can only do this on departure cities using the Explorer map, but for example, you know, say we live in the LA area, we want to do, let's do Santa Ana, Ontario, uh, Long Beach, Santa Barbara, and LAX. Separate these by commas, like I mentioned earlier, you can do up to seven. Excuse me, you can do up to five here for Explore Map. So I have these in uh, right here, and you can also scroll across and it'll show you the cheapest flights possible from all those five different airports. So Google Flights Explorer, very, very user-friendly and, and great to just pull up some very flexible results here, cheap as possible. I'd, I'd highly encourage you to use Google Flights Explorer. A couple more things I want to point out here. If I go back to the Flights tab, and I'm I'm pretty set on a certain date and time, uh, you know, I, I can use this. One of our favorite features is using uh, Google Flights price alerts. So you need to have a, a Gmail account, which you can sign up for free. Once you sign up for a Gmail account, you need to log in. Make sure you're logged in under your uh, Google Flights Gmail and then get to Google Flights. And then you can use a really cool tool called Google Flights price alerts. So I'm gonna pick, um, I'm gonna pick something here. I'm gonna do Phoenix, let's say. And I'm gonna click search and I know I need to go to Phoenix on a certain day, but I'm not quite sure if I'm ready to book it yet. Looking at midsummer, I'm gonna actually push this out. Let's do a Thanksgiving trip to Phoenix. So the 26th through the 3rd. And the flights are not where they are, where I want them to be at right now. Um, a little expensive. So the best thing that you can do and what we always recommend is using the Google Flights price alert. So when you're signed in, you can scroll down here and you can look at this tracked price. So you can track this for November 26th through December 3rd. If I click on that, it'll say you'll get an email, prices will change, and, and you'll get an email. Every time a price changes on these particular dates, you can track that. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that from my tracker. Say you're pretty fussy on inbound and outbound times, you can actually go a step further and select, I'm gonna change this up a little bit, I'm gonna do a Delta flight, and you can select, uh, say you wanna go in the morning and you wanna fly home in the afternoon. If you click on that flight combination, you can also take a look at these and go back one step here and you can click on track this and it'll show you those right there too. So not only is Google Flights Tracker really helpful, you know, people, a lot of people figure, okay, I can only use this this tracking system before I book flights, but I, I would recommend actually after you book a flight, especially if you book a main cabin fare, use this Google Flights price alerts, track your prices when they come down. Chances are they might come down. They do shift quite a bit. Look up that price again. Book it again. You can rebook it for less when you book a main cabin fare. So the game does not end after you book a, a cheap flight. Be sure you track those uh, flight prices and you can often find cheaper flights 
days or, or months after you book your flight, go ahead and rebook if you book the main cabin fare. Really cool, sweet spot for using Google Flights uh, price alerts. The last thing I wanted to mention is cookies. Uh, so Google Flights does not track your cookies. It is not monitoring how many times you visited the site. Uh, its main goal is to sell airline tickets to get butts and seats, just similar to the airlines. Um, Google Flights does not react to how many searches you've done from this city to that city. So that common myth that can get thrown out the window, Google Flights uh, does not track your cookies. You do not need to use an incognito browser or different browsers to, to have better outcomes with Google Flights. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Cheers to Cheap Flights.